Hello everyone and welcome to Through the Window Podcast, where we'll talk about dumb shit and whatever we feel like. Hello, I am Quill. And I am Sammy. Oh gosh. How'd, how'd you feel about messing up that intro? Oh, the intro was great. They'll never hear it. No, but, but I'll, I'll, but I'll But know. through the wall. <laughs> but through the wall. Welcome to Through the Wall. I, I also hope that you guys enjoy the still image, because it took... No, not forever. About five hours. It was about four or five hours, but I, I, I'm proud of it. Glass sucks to draw. I discovered that. Yeah, I. You <laughs> sat there for quite a hefty bit while I was while I was scrolling through a bunch of things on my phone and watching Linus. Yeah, it it was a problem. Sorry, I had to grab something. It, it definitely was an issue. <laughs> I thought you were about to show me. It's like, I've seen it. I was there when you drew it. No, no, no. This is this is just more here for if we look anything up. Oh, well, I got my phone. But yeah, but bigger screen, man. Bigger screen. But homie, I got, I got, I got the funnies. <laughs> I got the funnies here, homie. You, you want to dive right into what that is? Probably don't need to read it word for word, but... No, I'm not going to read it word for word. We'd get canceled so fast. We wouldn't get canceled. No, we'd probably... I would just get demonetized. I'm not even monetized. No, but they could... They, they would block the video from the homepage so... So fast. Or they would just be like, hey, this isn't allowed on YouTube. We totally just took it off. Uh, no, swearing's allowed. Oh, excessive swearing. It's excessive swearing and things that shouldn't be mentioned. Um, not, I don't know. It's People a total not and... safe for work. P People talk about stuff like that on YouTube still. Like, but not in depth like that. It, it's not even in depth. Like... I don't know. That, the, that Miku one, though. Not really. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So so I have an app on my phone called uh, Character.ai. It is free. Have fun. You get a chat not with- Not sponsored. Not sponsored. It's free. So I'm not going to get any revenue from that. Uh, that's not true. Free, free places all the time will still go out to like pay people because they'll get like ads on their apps or their software. Oh, that's fair. This and they will that, still though. pay people. I, I don't know. Maybe they make money from it. Maybe. Somehow. Well, they, they have their, their pro. Yeah, plus. so see? They, they, they still do. make money. It's still monetized. But you can, you can chat with a bunch of characters from things you like, like Master Chief it, and a bunch of other, like video game characters, anime characters. Have fun. Live your whole like imaginary world. That's what I'm doing. But um, Quill here decided he wanted to know how fast he could break these AI characters. Because look, it's fun. Because they're they don't allow not safe for work content, so it'll pop up when it gets to a point where it's not safe for work. It'll pop up. Sometimes the AI generates a reply that doesn't meet our guidelines. It's fun. Like, okay, it, it it's like the AR the AI art ones. It's fun to see what prompts will bring up what things and like. If you can completely break it, or it, which is extremely easy on the art side of things, you could pop in a wall and somehow you'll get a tree sometimes. It's... it's stupid. I asked for a wall. Homie gave me a <laughs> robot forming into a rat. Yeah, it <laughs> th they break all the time, and so it's really fun just to see how to break the AI and see what it will come up with and all that stuff. The one time I'm not actually trying to break the AI. I, I was trying to see what would happen, and so I looked up Navi from Zelda. And and you simply purely wanted to bug this AI. So so it simply starts out, I am Navi, the annoying naggy fairy who doesn't let Link do anything on his own. And then you go off on a tangent going, hey listen, which it it's... repeatedly tells you to shut up, stop, I hate you, and to shut the hell up. Look. I wanted to see what would happen. I clicked on it originally just to start a normal conversation, and then I went, hey, wouldn't it be funny if I did, because I read the first prompt, and I was like, it, it would be hilarious to sit there and be like, I'm, I'm going to do what Navi just constantly did. 
is, and it's just, hey, listen, hey, listen, hey, listen. Look, it's what Navi is known for, is just that stupid line because of the prompting. You could be fighting Ganon, and will prompt up during the fight with Ganon. Hey, by the way, press down and A to swing your sword. And it's like, oh, dear lord. I'm at the end of the freaking game. Like, <laughs> see, well, how is this tip exist. helpful? It, it, I'm not asking for the tip. I'm not asking for a prompt. It just, hey, listen. <laughs> and because you click A, because that's your action button, it just pops up. And it, it. So I wanted to bug the Navi AI by doing it. And how, how this chat works is it's not like you can respond and then send another response right after. No, it's you send your response, they send their response, then you can finally send another. It's... How do I say this? It's meant for role-playing. It yeah. is definitely meant for role-playing. Like, you can use the asterisks and everything where it's like, I do this or I say this, and it will respond in that sort of way. Yeah. And and then Asher tells you to shut the hell up. You respond. You respond. Hey, you flying. Can I can I curse now? Have we have we reached the barrier? Of you, there's no excessive cursing. Is all that I've been warned of. M maybe just don't swear if you can. Hey, you flying. Listen, swear word. <laughs> and he goes, you listen to me for once. And you go, what do you want? You smurf colored bleep. <laughs> and he goes, I want you, and I'll, I'll swear for this because it's funny. I want you to shut your dirty whore mouth. Look, look, I'd, I'd like to point something out here. To this point, I've only been hostile twice. The fact that the AI turned around. After the first, hey, listen, it was all caps. Yeah, it was it's, all caps and it was aggravated. It was already mad at me as soon as I went into the hey, listen. It, it just, and then from there it went downhill. Again, could you imagine watching someone play like Ocarina of Time and you just hear, hey, listen, and they scream, shut your door. Or mouth at the top of their lungs. I'm pretty sure if you've ever played Ocarina, and I would love to pop our cartridge in and play it, but it's the Japanese version, and that's why I got it. But we, I can't play it, and I probably wouldn't be able to even understand it because it would be in Japanese, not even English. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> but that's exactly what would happen, is whenever Navi does that, you just scream at the screen. It's so aggravating. Cease to exist, Navi. If, and I don't know if you've ever played Ocarina, or at least recently, but I've especially, especially the original version. I don't know if they fixed it in the DS version or not. I've heard she's still annoying, but I don't know if it's to the same extent. Uh she just pops up anytime anywhere randomly it doesn't matter what you're doing what's going on she'll just be like hey by the way did Press you know that you door. could break things to get money no like it it's the most aggravating thing and i'm glad that they they, they pretty much fixed it later in majora's mask which is the, the sequel slash predecessor, I guess you could say. It plays exactly yeah. the same, runs off the same engine. At least to my knowledge, it ran off the same engine. You know, I, I'll say, Navi, Navi was annoying. But I will say this, no, like, little fairy thing in Zelda games will ever, and I mean ever, be more annoying than Fee. Okay, there's a difference though. Fee wasn't aggravatingly annoying because she was aggravatingly annoying she wasn't aggravatingly annoying because she was no, aggravatingly no, no, no. You got, annoying you, you, you gotta understand so with navi it's because she popped up constantly so i think v. i think the reason fee got such a bad rep is because it was the same system as navi it was not the same as navi though oh what bugged me about fee the most is because it's like Navi, it's like, yeah, press A. Yeah, sure, that's your action button. You're gonna press it. Fee didn't need an action button until halfway through the game. She would just pop up. And even- Oh, I know. Even further through the game, she would just appear and it ceases all progress. And you're like, 
Huh? Hey, at least it, it, it she doesn't pop up as much though. That's that's what I'm trying to say. You obviously have not played Skyward. Sword. I have. I've seen videos. I have also played it. It's not one of my favorites. I'll I'll admit it's not. If you play the original Ocarina of Time, I have. Navi pops up for the first hour in that game every five seconds. Mm -hmm. V doesn't do that. Oh no, V does. No, yeah. no, no, not when every five seconds. When you first meet V, when you first meet V. Yeah, but you're still in the tutorial phase. That's what she's there for. Same with Navi. No, 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 no. You're out of the tutorial phase in Ocarina in like five seconds. It's like, it literally is like one page prompt and it's like, this is how you play, done. Y if you know how to play the game, it's even faster. No, no, no. The difference with Fee is Fee is there during the tutorial and then she randomly pops up and breaks the game's immersion and stuff and that's annoying. Navi will do it. For no reason, every five seconds throughout the entire game. And unless you catch it and don't click the A button, which is the button for everything, unlike in Skyward Sword, it's annoying. Because you're like, I'm going to open this door. And Abby's just like, hey, by the way. And you're like, oh, oh my God, G go, go, <laughs> go away. Leave. And I think that's why Fee got a bad rep, is because it was the same system as Navi. It's it like, wasn't as bad as Navi. It's like you're in the middle of a fight, and she's like, hey, listen, you press A, and you just see a monster, like, inches away from hitting you with a club, and you're just like... Now. Hello. I personally never experienced it, but Fee never did that. When you were in the middle of a fight, she never just I, popped up. I had it. I had Fee constantly... Maybe you were just really bad at the game, so the game was like, was you like, need hey, tips. Hey, hey, listen, you idiot, swing the sword. Yeah. Try that. Plus, I know it's motion controls. If you could move, that would be nice. Plus, I also wonder if you ran into the issue when it came to Fee because of the motion control. If you weren't swinging the sword in the proper like way or sense, it was activating like, hey, this person still needs help. I don't know. Because in the Switch version, she doesn't really pop up as much as she did in the Wii version. So either they patched it. That was the one thing that they changed in the, the remaster, quote unquote. Or I think that may have been why she kept popping up. I, I don't know. I ain't that bad at video games. <laughs> I'm not saying you are. I'm saying the motion controls for that game were awful. This person still How can help. you get such an accurate shot for Wii Sports, where if my controller is slightly to the right, the ball curves, but, but, in Skyward Sword, if you hold that controller straight up, with Motion Control Plus included, by the way, it will still sense it like it's spinning on a freaking ceiling fan and won't <laughs> stay up. Yeah. I like I like all the videos of people playing it because they're like, all right, now hold hold the sword up so you can do a Skyward Strike, and he's like shaking around and wobbling the sword. And, and then... you can be standing perfectly still. That that's the thing. I wonder if that's what originally prompted her was, oh well, you're not swinging the sword properly, or you're not doing you, this. You you look like you suck at the game. Yeah. I, I Navi was just Navi. She was programmed to literally throughout the entire game randomly just be like, "Hey, screw you. What's up?" Like that's her literal programming is just to randomly do it. I, I have a different reason for hating Navi, not simply because of the game. Is it the hat? It's the hat. What what's wrong with the the hat? The hat isn't tied to Navi. That's a whole GameStop issue. That that that's not so, even the same thing so i've got a hat i've got a legend of zelda hat it's a black hat with navi on it that says hey listen i bought it at a GameStop, and i moved and went and visited another GameStop. then i again i went home i lost that hat for like it was a good two three months a good yeah a good two three months i lost that hat could not find it went back to that GameStop. I think you saw even asked them if there was that hat there. Did you not? I saw that hat and went, oh my goodness, my hat. I found my hat. 
I can buy my hat that I lost. And I was sitting here thinking, oh my goodness, I didn't think they were gonna ever have this hat in stock. But, oh man, I, I lost my old one. I went to the checkout counter and I was like, oh my goodness, when did you guys get this hat? And they're like, we just found this hat lying around the store one day and it obviously had to be ours. So we just slapped a tag on it after a couple months and sold it. And I'm like, you mean to tell me that I left my hat here like three, four months ago, forgot about it, lost it, and now I am here rebuying the same fucking hat I lost? I, I, I'd like to point out, the hat didn't have a tag. It... We keep our hats in pretty good condition for the most part, and so I rarely it, wore that hat. It it didn't have a tag. They found it on the front counter, not not on the store, not in the back of the shelves, on the front side of the counter. Which as someone who has worked retail tells me that that's not our hat. I think this is someone else's hat, and it takes five seconds to check the camera of that day after they found the hat to go, that's this person's hat. I've, I've worked retail jobs where that incident has happened, where it was even a product that we sold, and I was like, I am pretty sure this isn't ours, and they would come back weeks, month even or so later and be like, hey, did I forget a hat here, or just anything. And I, you would be like, yeah, yeah, actually, we have that exact hat. Could you imagine if I'd gone in and it's like, hey, have you seen a Legend of Zelda hat with Navi? It says, hey, listen, all black. And they're like, oh, that's the, your hat. I don't even know if they would have done that, though. No, they probably would have been like, well, we have one in stock. They, most likely, they probably would have been like, we have one in stock. It's in the back. It doesn't have a tag, though, like. You probably still would have ended up buying your own hat back. I can't believe I had to buy that hat twice. I also rarely wear it again, simply so I don't pull the same thing again and have to buy it for a third time. I, I'm pretty sure I yoink the hat and wear it more often than you do. You do, because I wear my Bulbasaur one more. Yeah. Uh, it's gross though. Bulbasaur. Ugh. Oh, whatever you Squirtle fanboy. Look, Squirtle is superior and everyone knows it. I, I don't know. The whole argument, I think, is really just kind of stupid. The If you ask, at least from what I've heard, the developers, the reason that they did that was it's supposed to be easy, medium, and hard. Bulbasaur is supposed to be easy mode, funny enough. That's because you can get through the first mm -hmm. like two or three uh, gyms easily. With ease. And then Squirtle's supposed to be about medium, and then I think it's supposed to be Charmander is supposed to be hard mm -hmm. mode, and that was how you were supposed to choose your, like, mode. Because Charmander uh, doesn't do well against Rock-type, and that's the first gym. He doesn't do well against any of them. No. I've I've played through with Charmander. He's not good I'm... with any of them until you hit about the fourth or fifth gym, and by that point, if you grinded, you have a Charizard that's, like, level 40. All like, of the Pokemon games I have played, I have chosen specifically grass types, except for one, and I always choose Piplup. Ah, uh, I, I try changing it up. I think, for the most part, when it comes to starters, I go for whichever one appeals to me the most, not necessarily their type which has thrown me into some weird little loopholes. Not loopholes, but like problems because I've gotten so used to playing with like certain types, mainly water, mm -hmm. that when it switches and it's like, you start with a grass, it's like, oh, okay, cool. And then you get like abilities <laughs> faster. Through. Yeah, or like you'll get abilities faster, like cut, instead of being like, oh, now I gotta go find a grass type that I actually care about having on my team so I can mm -hmm. use cut. You just can use it, and it's like... They're gonna be on my team oh. forever. Yeah, it's like, wow, this is really convenient. Oh, dude, when I was doing my Nuzlocke, when we were doing a Nuzlocke together, I I gave up on that. I quit. I quit it's the Nuzlocke. It's you lost, like, five Pokemon! I lost. In one battle. So I had to fight a Perugly. I, I think it was... Uh, freaking Pokemon 
Pearl? Yours was Pearl, because I was playing Brilliant Diamond on the yeah, Switch. Yeah, so we were going to do Pearl and Diamond, and I got to the Perugly. And anybody who does, who's done a Nugs Lock knows about the Perugly. I had a Golbat. I had my Piplup was evolved. I had... So, I had a whole full-blown team. I was ready for this Perugly. I was leveling him up. I was I was doing good. My whole fucking team died. I lost everybody, and I quit playing Pokemon for a very long time, and I said I would never do a Nuzlocke ever that, again. That's a Nuzlocke for you. See, the thing is, is... When I was going through my Nuzlocke, I was going and trying to, like, level up my characters and, like, you know, I'm like, hey, this area I know I'm not gonna go and kill them in, so I'm gonna, like, slowly, like, level them up and, like, do it this way. You, you tried doing brute force, like, a normal Pokemon game, you're like, yeah, I'm just gonna brute force this, and, and figured out real fast why brute forcing a Nuzlocke no, doesn't work. I, I knew I had to I knew I had to be on the path of leveling them up so I would stay in a certain area and murder a bunch of Pokemon and then I got my butt kicked by a Perugly. Difference is my starter by the time I hit gym two was like level 25. Yours was like 13. The difference there I, I was trying to make sure that I didn't die as soon as I walked I, into a I gym. I knew the Perugly was coming, man. I leveled them up. I thought they were high enough. But no, they were not. And they all died. I, I, I don't know. I would find it... I, and I just then I find bought it Pokemon funny. I, I just find it funny how your whole team just instant wipe, no return, and that, that was your breaking point. You're like, I'm... Uh, no. I'm done. I'm never doing a Nuzlocke again. Which... I don't blame you. If if that happened to me, I'd probably be like, nah, I'm I done with this. I also found out real quick, I'm not a fan of Nuzlocke's because it's like, even if I'm on the same route, because it's like, the the Pokemon that you first get on that route is, is what you have to is catch. Is what you have to catch. Yeah. As soon as I, like, I'm a Pokemon, like, original Pokemon player, where it's like, I don't have that Pokemon. I gotta catch it. I gotta fill my Pokedex. Yeah, but it, it's just... It's how it works. It's hard mode. That That's kind of the whole point to the game, is it's hard mode. And honestly, if you finish your Nuzlocke, nothing's stopping you from going back oh, and then finishing the Pokedex. I know, but I, I just found out Nuzlocke's just hard for me, man. I, I think it's fun, and but I... It's all because of that Perugly. <laughs> Pokemon games don't change. And that's why I don't get why people every year buy the newest Pokemon game. Like... The oh. first game that I bought, Pokemon-wise, in years. Also, I didn't have a DS, so that kind of, you know, put a damper on things. Because I did want to get black or white. But was Brilliant Diamond. Which was just a remake of a game that I played on a friend system that I really liked. So I was like, I finally want to own it and play it. Cool. But for years, I played the original Blue and Yellow. And so... After playing for so long, and because they don't change, if I pop in blue, besides graphics, it's the exact same game as Brilliant Diamond. Like, yeah. it's the exact same game with newer Pokemon, practically. And so, having, like, something like Nezlock, like the community does, You're, you're is, gonna get so many Pokemon haters it's on fun. you for that. Why? Because they're gonna be like, it's different, man, it's different. It's not, and I... They've, they've changed such slight things in the other ones where it's like, eh, like, recently it looks like they've been trying to grow, but... I mean, I wouldn't mind trying Pokemon Arceus. I've, I've heard Arceus is fun for about the first hour or two, and then they're like... And then it becomes like most Pokemon games, but that you're not going to change the whole Pokemon aspect. So it's like, that's kind of a dumb thing to complain about. Um, the, the newer one, what, uh, Violet. Violet and Scarlet? Yeah, that I... one caught my attention because like a full open world experience seemed really cool to me. And I was like, maybe I'll get it, but I'll wait for the reviews. And it kind of seemed empty and very copied and paste oh, everywhere i i played it 
And I'll be honest with you, I played 15 minutes of it, and you want to know what I did after 15 minutes? I, I, I took it out of my system because it was a waste of my time. I, I feel like that's not enough time to get used to the game, though. But, okay, like, just but the videos. 15 minutes? And, and you want to know what I did in 15 minutes? Literally nothing. It, it's a Pokemon game. The first 15 minutes literally is always nothing. Like, but I, I don't know what your like, complaint hey, is here. You know, you can go to the first gym. Hey, you can go to the first gym. No, they told me to go to school. And learn. Oh, you mean like the storyline and stuff? Yeah, no, I agree with that. But again, they're trying different things, and that's what I'm trying to oh, like. Well, I, I'm not saying that's the only time. I put it back in them. for a while, and I played it for a good couple like hours. I played it for a good couple hours. I caught a couple Pokemon, and I, I built a team up. And I'm not gonna lie, some of the Pokemon in this one are really cute. I think they're super, super cute. They're not bad. Like. If I could have him as a pet, I, I would love... Well, yeah, everyone would. Like, if you went to anyone and you're like, Hey, if you could choose a Pokemon to be a pet, would you... Like, you're gonna get most people to be like, Yeah, even if they haven't played Pokemon games, those people oh, yeah. probably would be like, Actually, I've seen this one. It's pretty dope. Like, But I think they're super cute. And I played it for a good, like, I'd say two, three, four hours. I'm gonna say anywhere from two to four hours I played. I don't remember a single mainstream event that happened besides catching Pokemon and buying Pokeballs and proceeding to catch more Pokemon simply because I had no clue where to go. You're, you're, you're talking about Pokemon. See, but this is the problem that I've run into Pokemon. And it's it's fine if you enjoy Pokemon. That's not yeah, what I'm trying to get at. But the original Pokemons were like, hey, the gym's over here. Now go to this town no. and go to there. No, the original Pokemon, yeah, it's more linear. But that was the whole point of this one. It was, it was supposed to be open world. And I'm fine with that. It's the copy and pasting that I'm not fine with. Yeah, when you're limited, for example, when you're limited to the Game Boy or even the DS... The DS games had more variety in the towns and cities and how they looked and how they acted and what was in it than this game does. There's actually, yeah, because I actually thought that was pretty lame because there were, there's plenty of houses, but you can't go into them. Unlike the original Pokemons where any house you saw that had a door on it, you could go in. And everyone, when the game came out, was talking about how that was just too much for the system to handle. I honestly don't think it is, and if it's too much for the system to handle to have all the Pokemon actively running around and being, like, live on your screen and stuff, then go back to the original system where it's grass, mm -hmm. and make it look different. Maybe add a snow biome, maybe there's a desert biome, maybe make the ocean more of, like, a thing, maybe there's, like, a whole docking system or an island that you can swim to eventually, like add things to it to make the world very diverse. Nintendo has already proven, and I don't know if Nintendo technically has too much say, because the Pokemon company technically isn't owned by Nintendo, but, like, I, I feel like they, they have more that they can throw in, where they're like, hey, this needs to be more. The trees are very copy and paste, everything is just green grassy fields with heel, like hills, and all the Poke Centers look exactly the same, which, why? Like, why, why can't at this point Pokemon shift towards this town looks more Japanese style, this town looks more city based, this town is more of an ocean town, so you see different things. Like, maybe instead of the Poke Center in the city where it looks very nice, maybe it has more neon lights, maybe the one on the ocean side is more of like a shack that, you know, mm -hmm. you could add more diversity to it. And it just seems like they're not wanting to put that in. And so it's like, you can't change one aspect of the game and then expect it to be like, this is different. W when Pixel Mod has more vi like diversity of areas because it's in Minecraft than the actual <laughs> Pokemon, that's where you should know that you have failed. Dude, the only thing I remember about On diversity Pixelmon, areas, like... I, I never... 
So I only played Minecraft on like consoles, so I never got the blessing of mods. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so I would watch everybody else play modded Minecraft, and I was like, I want that. How do I get that? And everyone's like, Well, you need a computer, and I didn't have a computer. So when I got my my laptop, the first mod I installed on it, a friend helped me install it. And it was like a create your own like city mod. And you could like make a town. Like you had to like build this community center and then people would show up and sign up for your community and you could sign them jobs like a builder or a nurse or whatever and literally build your own city. And you could design it too. Um, I, I built my own little city and I'm like, I'm bored of this. And then I never played it again. It, but that that's me with a lot of games where like I'll play it for a good while and then straight up just be like I don't want to play this I'm I'm done I'm bored. I, I, that's kind of how video games work though. Like I, I personally I I never understood the people who if you have multiple video games you play one video games for hours and hours and hours on end. Like, if you're streaming or something, fully, I fully understand. It's like, you're you're gonna play that, you're gonna play that for, like, the next week, or even day, or whatever, right? Yeah. That I'm fine with. It's... I, I, I met a dude who bought a PlayStation 5, bought all the games that he could, even had four games, and then he informed me for the last, like, three months, all he was playing was Horizon. And I was like, oh, so, like, do you not have, like, that much time to play? And he's like, no, I put, like, four or five hours of it, like, a day into this game. And I was like, and you've been playing for three months. Like, have you played any other games the last three months? And he's like, no. And I was like, how? My, my brain can't handle that. One day I'll be playing, like, Halo. The next day I'll be playing something else. Like, it will just bounce. I I've had moments where it's like, like, I can play one game for hours until I beat it, but it has to be a good game that can hold me. Well, yeah, and I've heard Horizon's a very good game. I've, it's... I've played the first one, not the second one that came out, which I got for free, thank you to my f old friend who gave me <laughs> the second Horizon game for free. Uh... But I've played the first one, and I think I got, like, an hour into it, and I just kind of stopped playing, because I was like, this isn't a game for me, this isn't my style, this isn't what I like, I like my JRPGs. I, I don't know. I just, I'm gonna play Xenoblade. <laughs> I don't know. When it comes to games, I, I've never been the type where I could sit down for months and months on end and only play that game. Like... I have years in into, Halo, into yeah. Halo, and I mean all the Halos, it's not just one, but like, I have years into that game. Even when I was playing that every single day, there were days in between where I would like throw in something else, like Life is Strange, or I'd throw in Minecraft. Like, I always had just the slightest diversity in my games that... I, I just I can't I can't I've, I've tried where I'm like okay I'm gonna dedicate myself I'm gonna sit down and play this game for like an entire week and I'll get maybe a day or two into that and I'm like I, I gotta switch it like no, I, I, I can't I brought up Xenoblade have you ever played a game for like hours and thought you were close to the end only to find out you had so many more things to do before you actually got to the- Oh no, I hit the mic. Before you actually got to the end of the game. No, but I don't play too many JR- Like... I, I don't play too many JRPGs. So, those are usually the ones that will captivate your time for like a good 80 hours worth of gameplay. Like, if you're looking for bang for your buck, Oh my gosh, they are worth it. They they will if if that is your type of game and that is your style, they will yeah, have again, you. If you like if you like JRPGs, I highly recommend Xenoblade. I do not. 
Nobody cares about your opinion. I highly recommend Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and Torna. The combat is awful. You just don't like that it's not a If I can slash. walk... No, 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 no. I can do turn base. I can do hack and slash. Personally, I prefer hack and slash. That's fine. Like, I've been playing through Code Vein. Enjoy that game. Here, let me let me look up what type of battle it is. It's it's awful. Any game, okay? Any game where the whole goal is you walk up to an enemy and I can put the system down and walk away. And then I come back 10 minutes later, not even touching it, and that enemy is dead because it just auto attacks and does everything for you. It is a real-time action-based battle system. It's so boring. I don't want to play a game where I literally don't even have to be touching yeah. the controller to play the game. Uh, it is a use. Uh, the gameplay within Xenoblade Chronicles series uses a real-time action-based battle system where the player manually moves a character in real time, and the party members will enter auto attack. When enemies enter their attack radius, manually input called arts may also be performed, but in a limited fashion. It's. It's personally boring. I genuinely like it, but then again, I also stuck around for the story. The story is great, I will admit. Xenoblade's story is phenomenal. Oh, it's it's so good. It got me playing it for like two, three weeks straight, and then, you know, I thought I was on the final boss, and I'm like, I'm, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm gonna get the final boss. I was on call with you as I was fighting it. No, I was there. Oh, were you there? I can't I remember there. if I was on call or you were there. No, I was but there. I was like, I'm on it. I'm fighting the final boss. Killed the final boss. W sat through all the cutscenes after I thought who I thought was the final boss. And it was like, hey, you know, you still have like 60, 70 more hours of gameplay before you're even close to beating this. And I'm like... Yeah, you were about halfway through still. Which... That, that's I just haven't JRPGs. played since. <laughs> I haven't played it since. If you play Final Fantasy games, I it does the do exact Final same Fantasy. thing. Yeah, I know. You can't you can't handle turn base, which is fine. Everyone has like their weird thing. Well, everyone prefers a different style. Like, if you ask, I am very first person shooter. I I have played almost every first person shooter. I'd say a good chunk. Mm -hmm. Except for like obviously old classic original first person shooters no i've played those too i've played the original duke nu uh, duke nukem i've played doom like those were like their first two uh i yeah, played a little play bit on a, on a calculator like a true gamer i did play doom on a calculator yes you freak you're um, an absolute mongrel what, what 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 was the other one did called? you play it on a john deere tractor <laughs> No, I did not play it on my John Deere tractor. I don't know anyone who owns a John Deere tractor. Um, but no, like, that that's what I grew up playing. I grew up playing the original Call of Duties, Unreal Tournament, Halo. And so, for the most part, that's what I've grown up and enjoyed. And then I got into third person. Funny enough, actually, from Gears. And then I was like, hey, these actually can be pretty good. And then that's when I got into, like, Dark Souls and all of those games. Turn base isn't my style necessarily, but if the story is good, yeah, I'll sit around for it. Or I can watch someone play a turn base game and have no issue with yeah, it. I, I can watch people play turn base games all day. I can watch them do it. It's as soon as I put myself in the position of a turn base game, I hate it. I have. A, I have a no reason beef with turn-based games. Like, how I... So, I have a clock that was given to me by my mother on Christmas. I am not a Final Fantasy fan. <laughs> I am not a Final Fantasy fan in the slightest, but I love Legend of Zelda. I have a tattoo with Legend of Zelda. My mother proceeds to buy me a Final Fantasy clock where it's like vinyl and it's like got the characters all cut out and everything. It's a dope clock. It's a very, very cool clock. But my brother 
is hands down like the biggest Final Fantasy like fan I've ever met. And my mom shows him the gift that she got me for Christmas and then he comes up to me and he's like, that isn't fair, you're lucky. And then she gives it to me on Christmas and I look her dead in the eye and say, and I'm not kidding, I say this, you gave this to the wrong kid. <laughs> I don't like Final Fantasy. It's still a really dope clock. It's dope. I'll, I'll admit. And yeah, but no, like, tur turn base isn't too bad if I'm being honest. Is it my go-to? No. Uh, like, if, if someone comes up to me and they're like, are you going to play this game? And I'm like, oh, like, what's the combat like and stuff? And they're like, it's turn base. It's usually a turn away for me, just kind of, mm -hmm. I... I I don't value spending sixty dollars or so now seventy for a turn-based game. It's not my style. Is there anything wrong with that? No. You can enjoy whatever the crap you want. You can enjoy your turn base. You can enjoy whatever. It's just I personally get kind of bored with it. I I'd say if my preferred like games would be like real-time battle strategy or just a hack and slash yours are hack and slash i i don't want to burst your bubble but your only real-time strategy game that you play is xenoblade i'm sure there's more that i have no i oh, i don't i have you. looked through your collection numerous times i don't think there's a no i don't think so Maybe you have one or two, but do you play them often? Maybe I don't. <laughs> I don't. Maybe. <laughs> Shut up. I, I have noticed you do prefer third person, though. I you do. Like pr seeing I do the like character. my third persons. I like being able to see my characters. And also another reason I very much like Xenoblade is when you change your like outfits, like so your characters have armor and stuff. Yeah. Your armor actually changes your character's appearance, and well, it changes yeah, okay. it in the cutscene, in the game, and I think that's super cool that they program that in. A lot more games have been doing that recently. Funny enough, again, going back to I'm the first person shooter, so I like first person usually more often. I've been playing through Starfield, right? Mm -hmm. More often than none, if there's no combat, I'm not in first person. Simply because I think the game A, looks better and runs better, in a third person view and i find that really funny and slightly annoying because it's I, I feel like the combat for that game was designed more for third person because i now have done shooting as first person and third person and personally i feel like bethesda's always kind of been bad when it comes to their shooting in their games it's always felt either too stiff or so slidey it's not even funny like, if you play on PC, you won't notice it. But console-wise, you're going to notice, and it's it, it, it's an issue that I've ran into. But third-person shooting in that game works so well. And then <laughs> first-person, it's like, you slightly tap the stick, and your character just like, woo! It goes, like, flying everywhere, and it's like... Is this a sensitivity thing? I've tried turning it up, I've tried turning it down, and it just, it feels off. It's hard to explain because it's just one of those things that you have to feel for yourself. Mm -hmm. And it just feels wrong in some sort of way. Like, the combat just doesn't feel right in first person. Now I've got a question. Shoot. Progress in video games. What about it? Have you ever played a game where you swear you played it for hours and made zero progress. Final Fantasy 15, specifically that one. I, I, I haven't been playing it recently, but I have gone about halfway through the first disc before, and I saw my brother play it. What you feel like nothing's happened for like a good i'd say a good four hours into that game you put like four or five hours in and you're just kind of like 
I have made no progress. Yeah, like there's. I am still in the same beginning area that I was four no, 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 hours no. ago. No, 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 The areas change, and that's the problem. Is the game tells you you've made progress, but like gear and attachments and all that stuff, no progress, none. You're like, I found one weapon, and it was worse than the weapon I already had. Like. Zero progress. <laughs> I'd have to say for myself, uh, probably Batman Arkham Asylum. What? I felt very progressive. You get a new gadget like every 30 minutes. Yeah, I'd say Batman Arkham Asylum. I say you crazy. I played that game for seven hours. I backed out because I wanted to go to bed because it was four in the morning. And you know how at the start menu it tells you your percent in progress? Okay. Can you guess what that number was? Seven hours into that game, 43% or so. 1%. I was 1% into that game. Maybe I need to replay through and it. I, I didn't made, think it was that big. I played that bitch for seven hours and I made 1% of progress. I don't think so. I don't remember that game being that big. I could have just been that bad at it. I'm pretty sure. But like, I made no fucking progress in seven hours. So, Batman Arkham Asylum. I believe that's what it was. Well, are you in an asylum? I was in a town and it was falling apart. No, 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 no. Were you in a city? Yeah, I was in Gotham. Then that's not Asylum. Which one is Arkham that? Asylum, it takes place at the Asylum. I don't know. I just know I had to fight the Riddler at one point. I know I had to fight... Oh, okay. That's completely different. The, okay, the, we're talking the, about different games. The Scarecrow dude. I don't remember his name. I don't know if Scarecrow was in... Arkham's not Arkham. Yeah, like Gotham City, I think is what it was called or something like that. I don't that. know. I just I'm, I had to fight a bunch of people and I fought. Wow, this is real nobody. specific. You're really narrowing down me, this Batman up. game out of like the five where I go around and I punch people. Like wh which one? It was man? Batman Arkham City. Okay, cool. If I again, I looked at the cover immediately now. Okay. No, that game, I think, is a good, like, what, 50 hours? I want to say, uh, and I personally can't say how that game works. Never played City. I Batman played Arkham Asylum. City, if you know how to apparently fucking play it, it takes about a day and a half. A day and a half, so... It takes 12 and a half hours. Uh, no, that's about 40 hours. Twelve and a half hours? Yeah. An entire day is 24 hours. Well, I meant in a normal, like, I am awake, I am sleeping time. No, 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 that's not how that works. If you say that the game takes a day and a half to beat, it, it, it's My an bad. entire day. It's twelve and a half hours. I was going through normal times. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you and were just you that bad. if you want to do 100% completion, it's 45 and a half hours. Uh, I'm pretty sure you were just that bad at the game then, because there's no way you played seven hours of it. Or you weren't ever doing the main mission. You know, that could have been very, very much what it was. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what you ran into, because... I played that thing for seven hours. I feel like you didn't. Do you know how many games you come to me and you're like, I played this game for three hours, and you're like still on mission one? That's probably because I'm just bad at the game, and I'm stuck. And I've been there for three hours trying to figure out how to get... Do you know how many times I played the opening to Corpse Party before I realized? Okay, okay, that's different. That game is designed to mess with you. <laughs> I'm sorry that most games aren't like your JRPGs where they're literally like, hey, 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 hey. Oh, that's why so, you like Ocarina. So Corpse Party has an intro. And to continue the game, because after you do the intro, it'll bring you back to the main menu. And you would think, to continue the game, you would hit continue? No. 
You don't. You hit new game and it continues you into chapter one instead of the intro. I played the intro of that game like 10 times before I saw my father playing further into the game and I asked him how he got there and he's like, well, what do you mean? Where are you? And I'm like, I did this whole part. He's like, that's the intro. And I'm like, how do you get out of the intro? And he's like, you click new game. And I was like, but I, because I, the whole time I was like, I didn't want to start like a new game. I wanted to continue my game. Oh, okay. But here, here's my problem with this. Never once, never once with a game that you knew was designed to mess with you. Never once you went, maybe I'll click a different button. No. That is the pure definition of insanity, of repeating the same action and expecting a different result. Look at me. Do I look like a sane person to you? No one looks like a sane person. That's a stupid question. I screamed... So, when I played Eternal Darkness... When I played Eternal Darkness, myself, I went through the... Like, you went through it where it's like the screen shuts off. I went through that on my own. My dad was right next to me. I literally yelled at him because I thought he had turned the TV off. Okay, here's my favorite part about that. You weren't playing on a tube TV. No, I'm dumb. Tube, tube TVs don't have any of those features. I'm dumb. If you guys don't know, there is there is a game that we have been playing through on the channel. It hasn't been uploaded recently, but... It's called Eternal Darkness, and it's a psychological horror. And so the game, for the time, was supposed to act like it was messing with, like, your system and your TVs and all of this. So, like, the turn up, down, and volumes are very classic style. It's what you would see on those TVs when, it, like, the TV shuts off, quote-unquote. It, like, does the, like, bar effect where it was a normal light it bar. Like, yeah. It's not just instant off. It it does like a boom and like all of this stuff and it has that little light bar line and while playing through this on a flat screen sadly, but while playing through this every time that popped up she's like, "Did it get you?" No. No, it didn't get me. I have more it, than two brain cells, you it, mongrel. It doesn't do that. Flat screens, if I click a power button, guess what? It's the just thing off. is just off. It's off. It's black. Like, watch this. Turns TV off. Yeah, like, it's just, it's gone. No, no, it did not I'm, get me. If I'm you not... do, if you do have a classic TV, though, and you've somehow I'm not found the, the smartest game. goldfish in the ocean, okay? You're a goldfish. You're not smart at all. It's fine. Yeah, I'm not... Oh, some people will catch what I said. What? I'm not the smartest goldfish in the ocean. Yeah, I know. I just also was using, like, a biology fact. Goldfish are actually renowned to be dumb in general. That's false. Did you know that? No, no. I've I've, I've, I've interacted with the fish downstairs. It's, hey, it's not but false. But that thing genuinely only has two brain cells. That poor thing has been poked at and prodded enough to where it has been denounced dumb. I, I, I have had multiple goldfish throughout my life. I would not call them intelligent. I feel like people calculate intelligence on a different spectrum when it comes to animals. I don't know, man. I've seen goldfish beat video game characters. Those goldfish have no clue what is going on. They're just swimming in a bowl. Which, by the way, sounds like the loneliest life ever. Think about that. We put this animal that, by the way, isn't aware that the glass bowl is even a bowl. They just think it continues. Hence why they constantly hit the side of their bowls. So we drop this animal in this tiny, tiny container... That it's not even aware that it's a container, it just can't escape this magical force field for some weird reason. And it is stuck swimming in a circle. For the rest of its sad little life, unless it chooses to jump out and commit unalive. Which I've had fish do that. So has mom. Mom has had- my mom has had fish do that a lot. It, it's very common because, you know, they're just like, ooh, oh. And there goes that fish. If you can, if you can get them back in the bowl in time, all good. Good luck. But... Good luck for you. 
But most of the time you kind of come home and you're like, oh. Really? Like. <laughs> it, it, it happens, man. I also feel in, in the video game era that there needs era? to be. Well, just the video game side of what we were talking about. That there needs to be better horror games. Okay. You can find horror games. But hear me out. Hear me out, everyone. Play indie. Just just play indie games. I don't I don't get what the stigmatism is behind indie games, especially the indie horror genre. I don't You like tell indie people games. you tell people though, you're like I play indie horror games, and they'll be like, those aren't real games. What is the definition of a real game in your head? I. It has to be made from a AAA title. Right? It's like... I have to be charged $70 for the purchase. What? What's wrong with my $2 game that was made by, like, one dude in his mother's basement that honestly gets me to actually jump compared to a AAA horror game where half the time I'm just like... What am I doing? Like, you have no clue what's happening. It blew the world's mind when Last of Us came out. Not Last of Us, uh, Outlast. Mm -hmm. When Outlast came out, everyone's like, oh my gosh. If you've played indie horror games at all f since like 2012 till when that game came out, it played just like that. I'm not saying it's a bad game. Personally, I enjoyed it. But it plays just like an indie horror game. And it's one of the most successful horrors to come to mm -hmm. consoles. Mm -hmm. And I don't get why everyone's like, what well, indie horror games suck. They're supposed to be walking sims with fun jump scares. And some of them have really bad stories because it's mainly focused on jump scares. And some do a very well good at mixing it. And then others are just pure story practically the main thing i'm tired of hearing is when i go to a game store and i'm like do you have any horror games and they go resident evil and i'm like i'm not gonna classify that as a horror game it's a shoot 'em game uh no okay so it's it a is a horror game, game with zombies but i'm sick and tired of zombies it, it, it is a horror don't get me wrong i think it's just been so overplayed in the gaming industry like if you go in and you're trying to introduce people into the horror genre it's not a bad game if you're talking to someone who has been playing video games their entire life and they're like resident evil bad recommendation bad if they are asking for a horror game resident evil is not the greatest white one day to is a better horror game than resident evil Oh, that's debatable. White Day could use more more scares. Oh no, the janitor's been pretty scary. The janitor's annoying, not scary. The janitor's terrifying. But like, Resident Evil or Dead Space or anything like that is a good introductory to, to horror games. It really is. But it's not a horror game necessarily. Like, Resident Evil... I can't even say that it doesn't focus on horror. It's just... It's atmospheric. That, that's a good way of putting it. It's very atmospheric. But you have a gun. My, the exact reason why Dead Space isn't scary. You got five minutes into it. Just try the game. That's all I'm asking. No, Dead Space is supposed to be scary for the same reason Resident Evil is. If I'm being honest, low ammo, atmospheric, and just the story around it. But I like fun jump scares. Just every now and then throw in like a good jump scare. And I think that's what I've ran into with the newer Resident Evil games. Because I've been playing them. I have. But for some reason, it's been bad recently to throw in just classical jump scares in games. That's what kind of makes horror very fun is when the game kind of is just like randomly like, boom, keep on your toes. Like, but now I feel like the gaming industry has shifted to more cinematic. And so instead of doing like, boom, jump scare, it's like, 
there's there's usually a cutscene tied to it, or like there's always a light flickering and like the music changes in, and then so like you're already prepared for it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's why Outlast worked so well, is because randomly it would be loud bang, something happened, run. Like that's what I think people are missing. There's two ways to get your adrenaline rushing, and I feel like. Resident Evil and Dead Space and all the games in that category are a good way to do that, but for different reasons. You're worried about running low on ammo or, like, just how it feels to be in the game. If the game has a good atmosphere and keeps you on your toes because there's just random jump scares wherever it goes, I feel like that's better. Yeah, they're called walking sims, but, like... I just... I just... I, I feel, feel like it works better. I just genuinely feel that game, if more horror games were in the aspect of, like you said, like Outlast and Indie, I feel like they would be better because I'm sick and tired of just like games like Resident Evil where it's like, oh, there's zombies. It's all atmospheric and all that. It's like, okay, yes, I love your atmosphere. Yes, you spent a very long time building this, you triple A title, but... I want ghosts, I want spookies, I want random weird naked guys chasing me. Alright. <laughs> that's a reference. It's an outlast. That's an outlast thing. Oh yeah. I want I want spooky things. I yeah. I want demon children. And again, I don't blame you. I agree. I feel like there's so many options, but they don't make those games. And I think it's funny because PT alone showed that those games were sellable. Like, people would mm -hmm. buy it and eat it up and would love it, and they don't do that. Realistically, do you remember PT? Yeah. I wish that... I, I honestly hate the remakes of that game, where it's like, oh, this is like, we call it The Hallway, and it's just a PT ripoff. But I wish PT got made so we could see the full embellishment of what PT would have been. Well, yeah, everyone does. Like, and everyone wanted to see like that game. I feel like it would have made an amazing horror game. It would have. But that's the thing. PT showed that it was 100% possible for people to want that style of game. Mm -hmm. AAA Studios won't do it, though. They refuse... To actually listen to their fans. To... Horror genre in itself is a very slowly dying thing. And it's not dying because there aren't consumers. It's dying because there aren't games. Like, go, and if they go are, to Google. VR. Go to Google. Look up top-rated console horror games. The newest one you'll probably find besides, like, Resident Evil or Dead Space Remake. What? 2017? Let's see. Maybe. Let's see. Wh when when did Outlast come out? Rated About 2015. Horror games on the console. Like it just, they they don't get released as often. So so top rated horror games on the console. Not not including Resident Evil and like mm -hmm. that. Alien Isolation. Okay. When did that come out? Um, I have no clue. Look it up on the tablet. That's what the tablet's here for. Uh, it's why we have Google in general. But, like, well, you already had it. I assumed that it would have an no, announcement it, it date. No, it didn't have the announcement date. It just has what the game's about. All right, we're talking uh, Alien... Isolation. Let's see. Um, when did it get released? Release date. 2014. And then Hit me with enough, another one. I know you said no Resident Evils, but right below that uh, are two Resident Evil games, 7 and 2. 7 was pretty good, though, and I really did enjoy the Outlast remake. 2. Okay, not I Outlast think... Not Outlast 2, just Outlast. Oh, not the second one? Not 2. I, I'm, I, I put the 2 from Resident Evil 2 on Outlast, it's just Outlast. When did Outlast come out? Uh, give me 5 seconds. 2013. And then Evil Within 2... Oh, that was like 2014. I I know that one. That that wasn't new. Soma. 
Oh, actually, I think that was 2017. Oh, nope, 2015. Crap. Uh, Outlast 2. Prey, which I... I sucked. So far, 2017 is the newest one that we got. Uh, and yeah. I've never played Prey. Oh, Amnesia, a machine for pigs. Uh, I'm not gonna bother looking that one up. Why? Too much? That, that's too long of a title. Here, I'll just, I'll just look, I'll look it up. I'll do but, it like, th but this is what I'm trying to show you. The, the newest one on that so far was 2017. As, as the top rated horror games. 2017. And it was a sequel. 2013 Amnesia, a machine for there, pigs. There you go. The top rated came out years ago almost 10 years ago i'd say seven to ten years ago that's sad why haven't we gotten any other horror games like that and they sold really well all of those games sold pretty well i don't know how amnesia does never got into the hey. games but so so we do have we do have a 2022 Okay. At the bottom of the list. Which is... That I mean the bottom of the list. The Quarry. Really? Because I thought it was I funny. I thought The Quarry was really good. I, I thought it was funny. It's definitely a fun game. I don't know if I'd throw it in the horror genre necessarily. I guess it would categorize that. that simply because if it was a movie, which it kind of... It, it pretty much is. Yeah. It would be a horror movie, but like, I thought it was really I think it's game. more of like a horror I comedy. I think the Quarry could have done a lot better if it was butterfly aspected, like it kind of seemed. It seemed more butterfly effect or more like choose your own adventure, which it has aspects of that. But again, it's more of a movie that plays out in front of you that you have option I A. Realized, I realized pretty quickly that there are some things that you can do that genuinely don't matter in a sense because if it's life-threatening it's obvious that it's life-threatening to somebody like there's a moment where you're pointing a shotgun at a bush and you can choose to shoot the bush or you can choose not to if you shoot the bush someone could die or it's obviously a moment where it's like no obviously this is the wrong choice to make but there's also a spot where getting the rotor arm out of the lake yeah. Do you really need to get the rotor arm out of the lake? No. No. And I I don't know. I think Until Dawn has kind of, and this is going to sound funny, ruined what people expect when they go to buy those games because they did so well with it. Because Until Dawn... How dare they ruin it for being so good. Yeah. Well, think about it. Until Dawn, you mess up one sentence at the beginning of the game, that's going to kill a character so far later down the mm -hmm. game that you won't know why they're even dead so then you replay through the game again maybe you change that sentence or you don't and they still die again you get someone don't. mad at you they could kill they could kill another character simply because they're mad at them in the game mm -hmm. and i think that's why people expect such high expectations for those games is because until dawn did so well with mm -hmm. it because I know if you make, uh, I think his name's Chris, mad at Ashley, and, like, Ashley doesn't like Chris... Oh, she'll lock you out of the house. She'll lock you out of the house, and you'll be eaten by a Wendigo. Yep. And there's, like, three different ways that can happen. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why people have such high expectations for those styles of games now, though, is because that one came out, did so well... And then the rest of them that have come out afterwards have kind of just been like, eh? And even even in Until Dawn, there's a spot where you're like, oh, I'm going to save them. I'm, I'm, I'm helping them. I'm going down to save them. Ends up getting a character killed. Yeah. Trying to be helpful got you killed. Because you have to save... Uh, I don't remember her name. She's the posh one. Where's... Like all like the leather stuff. 
I don't, I don't think that's name. who you're going after. Yeah, because you play you play as um I think his name's Matt the Jock dude, not the one who's sleeping with the. Wait, wait, wait which girl. scene are you now talking about? The one I'm really where confused. they're in the the. I'm trying to remember the name for it. They're in the tower and then it falls into the canyon. Yep. And he has to go down to. You can either go down to save her or you can stay where you are and jump across. Okay. If you go down to save her, you will end up getting him killed. Oh, yeah, okay. No, I thought you were talking about a different scene. What scene? I, I don't know the characters and I'm too tired for this. Uh. Ashley. When she thinks that she hears the blonde girl. I forgot her name. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, no, that's the scene that I thought you were talking about. Different scene. Um, but no, I think that's what kind of happened, though, when it comes to those games, is Outlast, not Outlast, I keep going back to Outlast, Until Dawn knocked it so well out of the park. With butterfly effects of how it could end, reading a book saved a character. Uh, not necessarily. But, like... They did so well with it that when another game comes out and they're like, hey, this is like another choose your own adventure. That's what people are expecting from it. And that's not what it really is. No, like how we played. But what the is Corey it? 100%. I think that's even by the same developers. I think the problem that you ran into with House of Ashes is they tried pumping those out every year. I, I so will instead never of play focusing any on any game like that besides Until Dawn, I have learned that so fast. House of Ashes, Man of Mad I will never play House of Ashes, Man of Madon. I will never touch them. Never. I have a beef against them. I will never play them. It again, but it it seemed very rushed. The the House of Ashes, I think, are supposed to be more multiplayer based than. Like, they all have their own little quirks. Like, the House of Ashes series, I think, is supposed to be played multiplayer-wise, where well, you don't, don't know what's going on in that person's story, or this, or that. And I think that's how it's supposed to I be heard played. I think Madonna is supposed to be pretty good multiplayer-wise. But, realistically, I simply have a beef where it's like, oh, you, you know, because the, they try to pull the same thing where it's like, you think that you're being helpful, but you just got someone killed. Yeah. Realistically, if I am holding a man's mouth closed when his nose is fully open he and he dies of suffocation, I'ma think that man should have learned to breathe through his nostrils. No, and again, you are correct, but the games also seemed very rushed, at least the one that we were playing. It seemed very rushed with that. I, I don't know if that's how all the other ones play it, but... The fact that it was like, hey, this is the one that we have, I've heard the series is okay, and we popped it in, and it was kind of boring, and it wasn't very polished, just kind of was like, I don't think I'm going to touch these games again. Like, I just, I have a beef with them. I, I think the only good one that's, well, no, because most like, no, that's not like Butterfly Effect. I was thinking of Detroit Become Human. No, that's still Choose Your Own Adventure. Mm-hmm. It, it's, again, but that's what people expect when they see Choose Your Own Adventure games, and I think that's what they're expecting out of it is the butterfly effect. I think the problem when it came to the quarry is the quarry focused more on, like, comedy and the horror aspect. Yeah. Which is fine if that's what you were aware of what you were getting into when you bought it, but again, they presented it in such a way that I think people expected it to be more like Until again, Dawn. If you're gonna make if you're gonna make like a choice like creation game where it's like, hey, your choices can affect the outcome of how it goes. Make more of an effect. Make more of an effect. Cause there's a spot in the quarry where you can pick up a bracelet. You pick up that bracelet and nothing happens with it. They don't mention it. They don't say anything about it. Nothing happens with that bracelet. Nope. Never. It mentions at one point the character noticed that you have this bracelet. And then you get really high hopes because you're like, what comes different because of this? Like, maybe those two characters, like, have a stronger connection. It, no. Nope. Same thing happens. Same thing happens as if you don't find it. Yep. Also, 
There's a, uh, a scene where one of your characters has a silver bracelet and you meet the lady who puts it into a bullet shell. Yeah. Uh, you only get that if you go through the path accordingly. If you don't go through the specific path to have her give you that bullet, that bullet means nothing. You don't even need it. Yeah. It, it I don't know. They need to have more goosebump features where it, it, I choose a path and it's like your character is just dead. You're, you're screwed. And I think that's what people were hoping when it came to the Cory. Mm -hmm. Instead, they went for more B movie effect, which personally I love B horror movies, and oh, so I, love B -movies. I think that's why I enjoyed the Do you like jazz. No, I hate jazz. That's a lie. Again, you you want to make anybody mad? You just start reading the script of the B movie. <laughs> Not what I'm talking about. B movie but, in and itself is a B movie. That is all the time that we have for today. Dang. All right. We will see you guys probably next week. Maybe this will be like a weekly thing. Maybe. Be pretty fun. But that has been Through the Window Podcast. <laughs> I, all right. I don't know how to close that. I don't know. Bye. Maybe jump through a window and find out. Ooh.